What you doing at the courthouse? I'm a landowner in this town, and I'm here to demand no taxation without representation. Oh, knock it off. It's just Halloween. You're here to vote. Greetings from Fairfield. Welcome back to the channel. Um, well, it's been really fun the last few months, and unfortunately, I have some sad news to share uh, because it's time to say goodbye to our headless knight, Uncle Buck, Mr. and Mrs. Bones, and of course, Miss Abigail. And so, for Halloween 2024, that's a wrap.
That was a lot of fun. So, last couple of weeks, been lots of fun. We uh, we hosted a tour, but a house haunt tour for the uh, for a class at the high school. Kind of did a little little walk through there. We had a couple of uh, out of state uh, out of state followers that uh, contacted us, wanted to come check check it out, and a uh, handful of uh, locals. But also wanted to stop by and uh, see see how it looked, and uh, we had about probably two hundred trick or treaters, I'm guessing. And then something that unexpectedly happened, a sort of impromptu uh, house tour, where the kids wanted to tr not only trick or treat, but they actually wanted to come inside and see some of the stuff, which was uh, unexpected. But uh, but it worked out really nice, and it was great sharing all of that with them, all all of the work that we put into this. We uh, we most frequently asked question was uh, how uh, how long does it take? Like when do we start decorating? And uh, basically, we start September first, kind of bringing everything down and unpacking it and getting it all arranged. And then uh, by October first, we're kind of finished and ready to go, and so we can kind of you know enjoy it and tweak it and have uh, have people come check it out for fun. We were also gifted this really beautiful, nice piece of uranium glass, which we had been talking about doing because we wanted to start a collection, you know, for uh, for uranium glass because that looks super cool and spooky. And so now we got our first piece to start our collection. So thank you, Lori, for kickstarting that. 
and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed our, our uh, house haunt. So, as I said, we continue to tweak all the way up until Halloween and uh, had, a, had an idea, last minute idea for our skeleton horse, which worked out really well. And we had just got um, a beating heart um, that we added to our Edgar Allan Poe display and decided last minute to take that heart and add it to the horse. So when the horse sounded off, the heart would, that was dangling in the center of the rib cage, just sort of suspended there floating, would start beep, beating and light up the entire rib cage. And wow, did that look fantastic. So that's something we definitely want to incorporate next year. But about our Edgar Allan Poe display, a little side story is inspiration uh, to add to that as to why it's there. We read in the newspaper archives. Remember when I talked about like doing research? We found a story in the 1890s while Mr. and Mrs. Beck were building this house. They lived just a few blocks down the street. Annual Halloween tradition was to have a book reading of Edgar Allan Poe on Hallow's Eve. So we thought it'd be pretty appropriate to like have a little dedicated uh, uh, display of Poe. Well, so we didn't get a ton of stuff done around the houses last week with you know guests coming to, to visit. But, uh, but I did get a couple of things done. I got Kendra's Hollywood uh, Regency lamp put together. You might notice we got our mantle top on. And so it's uh, this is just a temporary, but it's, it's up there. It's solidly up there. And uh, we kind of wanted to get a look to see how it was going to turn out. And, and it lines up just perfectly beautiful on this side. So it's nice and flush all the way up, nice and straight. And just looks fantastic. It really changes the look of this room. So I can't wait to uh, to finish that up. But we do have one unexpected issue. So I'd already mentioned in the previous video, and a lot of you suggested that I just come in and, and splice a piece of wood uh, here, here down below to sort of take up this gap of maybe a, I don't know, quarter inch so that uh, the, these side pieces will overlap. And so we might just do that for that piece, but something kind of unexpected here, where we're really close here. I mean, maybe a 16th or an eighth inch here at the bottom of this. This is where the top comes down and sets on the bottom half like a shelf. And But as you come up, it gets a little further away. And by the time you get to the top, we're... I don't know, about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths off. So I'm not sure what's going on there. If we're just, if the wall is out of whack, if the mantle top is a little out of square, I have to get up there and, and measure that because we, I didn't actually notice that until we got it up there because we were kind of just centering it off on the bottom edges. And so now that it's up there, we can get some measurements and, and figure out how we're going to correct that issue um, or to see what's going on uh, because it's possible that the wall and chimney is maybe just slightly crooked, but uh, well, we'll get up there and figure it out uh, once, once we wrap up with all these holidays because we've got a Christmas tour coming up. And so day after Thanksgiving, we light everything up. And the town comes to see the, uh, the Christmas house. So until next time, I guess.